What's going on, everybody? It's me, Rich, and I'm back again, and I'm wearing this shirt. Today, we talk to Eisner nominee, uh, Jesse Lonergan, uh, and uh, it's a great conversation. Uh, Jesse got nominated for his book, Hedra, that came out last year for uh, Best Single Issue Comic. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. I suggest to check out the book, his work, and check out this interview. All right, guys, welcome to the show. Jesse Lonergan. Jesse, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, how are you doing? I am not too bad. Uh, it's a little hot today, but you know we're yeah. we're, we're gonna get through it. You're you're an East Coast guy too. You were just talking about that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's early. It, I feel like it's it's early for me to be like as as angry about the heat as, as I have been in like the last week. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll tell you exactly why. Uh, because la- I had this conversation with my wife last year i was like did it because i get i get pissed off at the heat also believe me like i sweat i sweat <laughs> yeah, yeah. a cool breeze man and uh oh yeah a few weeks ago i was like when it started hitting like the seven like 60 69 70 72 i was like it wasn't this hot last year was it and then my wife was like you know we spent pretty much the entire summer in the bedroom with the ac <laughs> on a full blast i was like yeah. oh and- yeah that's right the, the whole last year was nuts you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm the same way. I, I really like can't deal with the heat, and like um, I think getting like an air conditioner was like the the best thing for my relationship. Uh, <laughs> you know, like it was just like I think we're gonna break up in the summer because uh, it's just too hot for me to be a nice person. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah dude i'm in the same boat man like yeah. if, if i if i need that air conditioner if it's i just get like so cranky and jumpy yeah, and yeah. weird it's like uh, <laughs> it's like the the hot the hotness i feel is like you know when you watch an old when you watch a movie from like the 70s and they show like midtown manhattan yeah yeah, yeah like just like the sizzling heat waves i feel like that's my brain yeah. It's summertime perpetually, you know? And, and it's sort of like anything anyone does is sort of like a, a result of insanity mm-hmm. uh, just from the heat. It's like, well, it wasn't, it wasn't really them. It, was, it wasn't, it was 95 degrees. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was the heat demons that, that took yeah. over. So in, in all the bios uh, I've seen of you online, it says that you grew up in Saudi Arabia and Vermont. Uh, how does that work? <laughs> um, well, uh, I was, my, my father worked for uh, Northrop, uh, which I, I think is Northrop Grumman now, okay. um, in Saudi Arabia. Um, and so I was born in California, and then until I was five, grew up in Saudi Arabia. Wow. Uh, and then moved, my parents uh, moved back to the U.S. and to Vermont. Um, and so I grew up after five in in rural Vermont. Uh, Vermont's awesome. So, yeah, not the, <laughs> not the standard uh, beginning, I guess. Um, oh, that's fascinating. And how yes. long uh, How long until it took you to start doing comic books? Um, I mean, I feel like it was something I was always sort of making, kind of like starting in, in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, I sort of like, um, I feel like, I don't know if it's just like the way the industry is or it's partially just growing up in rural Vermont, uh-huh. but like comic books were sort of like invisible and like, you know, you, you didn't see them so much. Like you might see mm-hmm. them in a grocery store, but probably not. And like um, seeing some friends comics and like being like, I don't know, is this whole world and yeah, kind of immediately with like discovering them, like, like also like wanting to do them. It was like, Mm-hmm. you know kind of i feel like very quickly my heroes became like the artists <laughs> um you know like where i'm i'm not that concerned about batman but i'm really really concerned about john romita jr um uh, you know and so um kind of think you know starting i don't know probably 16 17 and then it's been something i've continued that's awesome I, and i think I, I i feel like i have what you just said i kind of have in common with you we're like I will follow creative teams more than I will follow a character. Oh you know? yeah. Oh. Just because like I, I'm 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 a sucker for like, you know, just like what kind of creative juice people bring to a book, you know. And like this show is basically the goal for this show specifically is to do a hundred creator interviews, you know. So oh, okay. from like, you know, top to bottom, just like people who are putting out 
like good books, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, like I, I w- I'll be honest with you. I, I'm a very nice guy. I may have yelled <laughs> at the guy at my comic store to get me a copy of Hedra. Like <laughs> because they, o- they only had two copies when the book came out. And I was like, okay. I was like, dude, like, what happened with this and uh he was he was nice enough that he gave me i this is like my store that i've been going to since i was like 17 uh, oh, gotcha. he was nice enough that he gave me his copy oh wow and, that's, a, yeah, that's a cool store which was really cool and then like you know because he was like i'll just order another one you know or whatever yeah, um awesome. fantastic book uh really loved it Thank loved you. the oversized you know like the like the bigness of the book and you know what you just got nominated for an Iser for best single issue for that book specifically. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, it's quite a quite a surprise. Uh, uh, 2020 was like a year of un- unexpected things, and that was oh yeah one of the good ones, I guess. Um, but no, uh, I just found out you know last last week somebody. Um, I, I'm always amazed at like who's really up on like industry things that mm-hmm. are happening, like. Like, I don't know when they got announced, but it seemed like within minutes of them being announced, I was getting text messages and I was like, oh, I guess that's today. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that kind cool. of stuff is always fascinating to me, you know, because it's like all of a sudden here are the nominees, you know, and it's never yeah, like, yeah. you know, it's it's I, I personally never hear like any buzz beforehand. It's always like a bomb drops and it's like, this is who's getting nominated yeah. for what. And, and like as a fan. You kind of have like, in the back of your head, you're like, "Ooh, this is gonna win something, or this is probably gonna get nominated uh-huh. for something uh-huh. or other." Uh, so walk me like, walk me through that process. Like, how long did it take for you, you know, from inception to having Hedra in your hand, and then your reaction to getting that that Eisner nomination? Oh, this is a, a long process. Um, you mean from like starting like drawing like the the book? Well, um, where let's let me i'll try to i'll try to make it so that you don't have to go through every minute detail how about Mm -hmm. um when did you start making the book and what made you put it out through image um well i uh, i started probably started it it's a it's a long time to work on it Mm -hmm. um and uh, I had just done like a, a graphic novel that came out through NBM called All Star. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like this coming of age baseball story um, that it really, I really felt like I put a lot of effort into it mm-hmm. and like a lot of work and like a lot of like, I don't know, like the the stereotypical, like struggling artists being miserable, like working on their open mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and then it, it then it came out and like just nothing happened. Like like mm-hmm. it, it just like it came out and it was just like like gone. Nobody knew about it. Um, and like I just kind of I felt like burned, not by like anyone, and not like particularly by myself. I was just like I don't want to do this struggling artist thing I just want to mm-hmm. make the comic I want to make and I don't care about anything mm-hmm. else and so I just sort of sat down and started drawing like this rocket ship um and that's that's sort of how it started with just like I, I don't care about getting published or anything like that uh, I'm just gonna make it um and so so I made it and then I self-published it um as a newsprint edition so oh, wow. like even more oversized uh, than the image one. And uh, I think I have a few theories about how a copy of it got to Eric Stevenson at Image, Uh Um, but he got a copy and then he contacted me and asked if I want to do a mass market uh, edition in uh, the beginning of 2020. And then it it came out in July, I think. Uh, um, And yeah, and then it, it seems like it it had a, a bit of a response. Like it seems like it got good reviews. Yeah, and then it got nominated for, for an Eisner, uh, which was was a pretty big surprise. Like all of it was mm-hmm. sort of like a this steady surprise. Like, you know, like before he contacted me, I wouldn't have thought it would be the type of book 
uh, Image would put out. Mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, because it's it's kind of a weird book. It's, you know, it's definitely not for everybody. Um, and so it, it felt a little uncommercial to me, but, you know, Eric was behind it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's sort of the story, I guess. Um, that's I gotta say that's really cool especially because you know I had no idea that you put it out as like a giant like a newspaper right pretty much yeah yeah like, it's, it's like a like a free weekly size okay. um you know um yeah like it was it's kind of crazy putting something out on newsprint because mm -hmm. like um I was living outside of Boston at the time mm -hmm. and like I knew like the guy who worked at the weekly dig and he put me in contact with, with like this newspaper printer and they they wanted me to do like a minimum 2000 copies and i was like mm -hmm. i don't even know if i have room uh -huh. for 2000 copies in my like apartment like uh, so i got like a thousand copies um and i sent them the files in the morning and they're like a newspaper house so uh -huh. they were like like 12 30 that afternoon they were like it's done you can wow. pick it up <laughs> like like just like super fast no proof um but yeah it was it was fun fun experience and the book itself is and your art also it's like there's something about it that's like kind of indefinable you know if i'm honest with you like it's very and like i mean that in the best way possible you know where uh like let's look at hedger specifically where it's so visually captivating that the first time I read it, it may, and this, this might make me sound like a total dope. It made me think that you were a scientist. <laughs> just the way the, the paneling, the paneling was laid out, just the layout of the book itself. You know, I was like, this is brilliant. This is super smart. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, no, not a scientist. <laughs> um, but it's very like, like mathematical, I think. And it's, I got pretty obsessed. Like it's, it's like, I feel like uh -huh. it's definitely a work of sort of obsession. Um, and, and I don't know, like, sometimes I'm like, I don't know if, if anyone else sees what I was getting obsessed about or what I was uh -huh. doing, but I think they can feel that I got obsessed. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, <and> like <laughs> like whether, whether it's clear or not about mm -hmm. what I'm obsessing about, they're like, no, this guy was, getting into this um it's a so good yeah. it's a good level of obsession i think because sometimes <laughs> yeah you know like sometimes you read books and like i'm an avid comic reader clearly and like you know sometimes you pick up a book and you're like this is a little too much you know <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like this yeah. like the the obsession kind of takes you out of it a little bit and then like right. you kind of start I, when, whenever that happens, I immediately think like well the obsession that's put into this has taken me out of it and it makes me wonder like about the creator and like that would be a much more interesting story than what i'm reading you know because this yeah, is kind yeah. Of, you know and uh there's, you know like go ahead i think of like there's sort of those those books and i don't i think it can be good but where like the main character is really like the creator mm -hmm. and more than than any character in the story and and i think it can be very good like i would i would I would say like Kurt Vonnegut. Okay. I kind of feel that way, reading like Kurt Vonnegut stories. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there are characters, but but really, what I'm coming there for is like Kurt Vonnegut's voice and like the tone and like you know his sort of worldview. And so I sort of, even though he's not in the books or not in all the books, like I think of him as like the main character, and I think that's like a good uh -huh. way. But it can also work in the not so good way, where you're like, oh, this guy's this guy's got some hangups. Like yeah, <laughs> you know, like the, you're, you're reading the book and you're like, I don't know, this guy, uh, there's some stuff in his background. Um, <laughs> it's a little too much right now. <laughs> well, yeah, uh -oh. the Vonnegut yeah. thing is interesting too. I I agree with that 100. percent But you know, like I I'm a huge uh, Philip K. Dick fan. You know, and there's so yeah, many yeah. parallels between them. You know, where it's like a lot of those yeah. obsessive works are are themselves in their own books you know and right, yeah, you know yeah. like it, it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting how that plays out like especially for like like uh like a like a creator you know and mm -hmm. when you when you put it in into comic books that's also fascinating too because not only are you getting the written word you're getting like the visuals that go with it and you right. do everything right so you're artist yeah. writer 
anchor colorer i'm assuming yeah yeah, yeah. um uh everything yeah so like i do feel like that's kind of one of the great things about comics too is that mm -hmm. you really are seeing like i i think especially with the artists like you're seeing a lot of personality in mm -hmm. in the lines that they put down on paper like um or you know even digitally like that you're seeing i don't know a bit of their mind it's like a handwriting almost okay um, yeah so. or like mental language almost yeah yeah definitely. yeah um what's what's your artistic process like are you traditional or are you just like straight digital or no, a combination no, of both um for for pencils and inks it's all traditional paper mm -hmm. um and then coloring i'll do digitally um and when i do lettering generally i prefer to do it by hand um okay. sometimes there's like the undeniable ease of doing things digitally, but um, I feel like with, especially with the way I draw, which I think is a very clearly hand-drawn look, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it really doesn't look like a computer made it, um, like it benefits from having a, a hand-drawn lettering and sort of the, the inconsistencies of humanity, um, you know, uh, in there. Yeah, I, I do appreciate that. And it's like, it's so interesting, you know, like you mentioned the inconsistencies of humanity, just like with putting uh, pencil to paper. But man, like mm -hmm. some of some of these digital pieces, like you, you almost get fooled, you know, it's almost like a it's almost like a forgery. Oh, those inconsistencies, uh, I mean, you know. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it's, it's definitely like, if bas basically, I, I think like, you know, digital programs now are definitely on a level where I can't tell a lot of the time, um, but just for me personally, like working digitally, mm -hmm. it's just not the same. And I just don't have the control or like the, the patience, yeah. <laughs> patience to get, you know, it's sort of like relearning something. And I'm like, well, I can, I can draw it really quickly on a piece of paper and it's gonna take me a long time and I probably won't even be satisfied with it doing it on a computer. So I stick with the paper. Um, but I would like to be able to switch to a computer um, uh, just because of all the advantages. Just the um, ease of use. The also, you know, it's funny because like a lot of artists I've talked to have said for the show and like outside of the show have said the same thing where it's like, you know, as much as I want to do digital, I'm not going to sit there and learn it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's. <laughs> a bit of stubbornness um, i think um so talk to me about uh planet paradise i believe that also came out from image right yeah yeah that came out from okay. image uh last november um and so that was that was a book like um i did after hydra but it was it was finished when e image contacted me mm -hmm. so they were like this saw hedra and then they're like do you have anything else and i was like i have this book and they're like great um so both of <laughs> them awesome. got signed <laughs> and like, uh, same same day basically um and so that one it's a little i don't know i think it's like a little weirder than hedra mm -hmm. i think like i feel um hedra is like very like in your face um in terms of like uh the way it works the way it looks like mm -hmm. you know like you i feel like you look at two pages and you're like okay i i know what i'm in for uh -huh. um and you know whether you want to take that ride or not um but like planet paradise is a little more nuanced it's a little bit more of a a personal story mm -hmm. and so it's I, I feel it's like a little bit weirder <laughs> actually as a result um you know it's about like uh like a, a person who doesn't realize how strong they are, sort of realizing how strong they are, mm -hmm. um, but also sort of this like conflict that I feel in life of like, there are people who are strong and then there are people who think they are strong. Okay, and, yes. And oftentimes like someone who thinks they're strong will like be in a position of power because they have like this confidence and this attitude, even if they're not. Mm -hmm. um while someone who might actually be very strong might not be because they don't have this this surface level um and sort of planet paradise is about that kind of 
that kind of split, like that kind of revel revelation of like who's who's strong, who's tough, and and who isn't. I think that speaks a lot to kind of like modern society too, you know, because like the more, the, you know, the further we get into the future, the more layers we peel away from the human psyche and you kind of get that, you know, and a lot of that stuff is evident on TV, you know, like on like, mm -hmm. like not reality TV, but oh, yeah. like I, I was going to call the news reality TV because for quite some time, that's what it was, you know, but you know, like you, when you're yeah. looking at somebody speaking, you know, if they're a position of power, you can kind of see like, you know, like I completely understand exactly what you're saying. Oh, I, I definitely feel, yeah, especially like with politicians, like yeah. I feel like they're one of like the most important qualities is like confidence. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it doesn't necessarily matter what they say. It's like, it's like, did, did they believe what they're saying? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, like, are they, they saying it with like confidence? And so like, like, I feel like, you know, when Barack Obama beat John McCain, mm -hmm. like, I feel like it was a close race and then the economy collapsed and right. it was clear John McCain didn't really understand like what a subprime real estate, whatever that was. Right, and it was right. just like, oh, he doesn't know. Uh, like it doesn't really matter if he understands how this like loan crisis works it's like eh, probably not but like doesn't look confident Barack Obama clearly understood it all like right I'm right for him. it um, wasn't it for the wasn't, people who are undecided um yeah. it was it's yeah it, it wasn't the uh the bottled kind of braggadocio you know where it's like yeah, people yeah. can see okay. that from i think especially now people can see that sort of confidence a mile away where it's not genuine you know um yeah. so um I, so. I don't know sometimes I, i'm not sure you know i, th <laughs> I think sometimes i feel there are people who are getting by i'm like oh. it's i think you have you definitely ha I, I just met you we haven't talked before this but i think you definitely <laughs> have you have the quote unquote curse of self-awareness, you know, <laughs> where <laughs> it's very like, I, I, I'm i there with you, you know, where like you kind of, you kind of want to hope people get it, but you know, yeah. It's, yeah. and I still, I surprise myself all the time when I'm like, ah, why don't they get it? Of course they don't get it. You know, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's yeah. like, we live in a yeah. weird time, um, especially with yeah. that kind of thing. So um, Planet Paradise came out in November. Um, and yeah. what, what are you are you working on anything now for image or for independently i know you have a patreon that yeah, you're putting out like your, your comic another um, comic through right yeah um i'm working on on patreon i'm working on like this like really long comic it's, <laughs> it's called prime and it's sort of like my take on like a, like a medieval hero epic mm -hmm. um you know and it's got like a lot of mythological aspects um and basically it's going to be five chapters and i've finished two of those chapters mm -hmm. and currently at like 125 pages um so it's you know it's it's going to be well over 300 pages i think um by the time i finish it uh, uh i've talked with i've talked with publishers um mm -hmm. about how to do it um and there's been some interest but but mainly it's like, it's still early stages uh, in terms of it getting picked up by anyone. Uh, uh, is, but it's, yeah, I, I do new pages on Monday. Um, so at least at least two every week go up. Um, and it's really cool having the Patreon because it's like, hmm. I gotta do this. Uh, you know, it's like this, this deadline. Um, and it's, it's sort of more similar to Hydra, I think in terms of style. It's a lot of wordless, stuff it's a lot of sort of like page layout experimentation mm -hmm. as well um so and, are you uh, what else yeah sorry to cut you off i think we're having no like a little bit of a lag um oh, okay. okay i'm also very full of caffeine so i'm very jumpy uh but <laughs> so how does how does that work for specifically what you're doing on patreon because are you doing two pages and then you're doing another two pages or do you have like not to if you don't want to pull back the curtain too far or do you have no, like no, a stack no, no. where curtains. you're like the, i'm good to go for the next five weeks uh i would like to be that far ahead <laughs> um i think 
let's see. I think I'm about 10 pages ahead right now okay. in terms of, of drawing. Um, I liked, I'd like to be more uh -huh. ahead, um, but it's just sort of like, you know, balancing, um, you know, that my sort of personal stuff with like more paying, more immediate paying work uh, yeah. that I'm doing as well. Um, and so I try, and if I get like, you know, occasionally I'll get like a good, good routine going and be able to get mm -hmm. more pages done. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm ahead on penciling and inking and then I'll color sort of like, um, you know, the Friday before, um, and it depends how many pages feel good to post. Okay. Uh, what's, what are your, uh, well, first of all, what's your Patreon link so I can throw it on the video when, uh, when I publish it. Uh, my, my Patreon link, it's just, just my name. Um, let me look it up quickly. Um, I never remember. Um, I think it's just like Jesse Lonergan. Uh, just make sure. Cause like sometimes like I've come across stuff and somebody would turn around and be like, Oh no, it's like jazz man 45. I don't know why I picked that name. No, no, it's definitely everything is, mm. everything is my name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> very, very boring in that way. <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay. Let's see. It's not letting me look. It's Jesse Lonergan. Uh, it's patreon.com slash Jesse Lonergan. Yeah, just slash cool. Jesse Lonergan. Uh, awesome. What are what are the uh, tiers on your uh, your Patreon? They're they're all the same. All right. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's basically like the lowest level is mm -hmm. is a dollar. You can give three. You can give five. Mm -hmm. um, it's like I feel like Patreon. Like there are some people who are making like videos and doing lots of great mm -hmm. stuff, but really like what I can handle is like I'm working on this comic. I'll post pages regularly. Um, I'll do some process stuff when I can. Um, but it's hard. I, I'm like, I'm really impressed with the people who do process videos yeah. that, that have some level of production value. Mm -hmm. Like, like for me, it's just hard enough to remember to turn on like a recording while I'm drawing, <laughs> but then like going back and like doing like an overdub of like explaining what I'm doing. It, it's really, really hard for me. And also I'm not, what I'm interested in is making comics. I'm not particularly yeah. interested in making videos. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of like, I, I try. And so I've done some like, you know, time-lapse stuff and mm. sort of putting things together, showing pages coming together. Um, but mainly it's just, just the comics and it's just for, you know, people who feel like showing a little support. Mm. Um, it's like an easy way to do it. That I, I think, you know, like you, having the Patreon and you touching on like also like a lot of people doing their own kind of like mini production studios with that. The, I think we are in the age of like where the comic creator has to be his own like production team, you know, and like you're, and you're clearly <laughs> hustling, you know, but there's, a, and like you just mentioned, you're like, there's people who are like, I don't know how these guys are doing this stuff, you know, like, and I, I feel the same way, you know, like I'm flabbergasted at the amount of content people are able to mm -hmm. put out week after week after week, you know? um after oh yeah after we're done recording i will give you an easy easy pointer to do the process stuff okay yeah because the one of the programs right. that i use you can uh, it's, i'll tell you i'll tell you after we're done but it's uh it's good stuff uh, okay so are you uh, besides besides the I'm patreon scared. yeah dude like uh, believe me like it's it's the easiest fix in the world and as long as your computer's pretty decent you can handle it um what like besides the patreon uh, weekly pages like what else are you working on now if you can talk about anything um i'm i'm doing i'm finishing up a book that i'm, I'm not sure if i can talk about it oh. um it's not hasn't been announced or anything so i think i'm not supposed to but it's like okay. a graphic novel um that i'm uh not writing but doing all the art for uh oh. except for the lettering and um I finished that just recently, penciling and inking, and now I'm doing all the coloring mm -hmm. uh, for it. Um, yeah, and that's sort of like, I guess, the main work right now. And then there's there's other smaller projects and stuff that come up as well mm -hmm. and commissions or like little sort of like small, small gigs, like doing a wine label or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, I mean, like that's, it's art 
regardless yeah. you know which yeah, is yeah. which is awesome you know and uh I, that was kind of going to be my supplementary question where it's like do you see yourself working with anybody else but now clearly something's happening <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i like i like the idea of working with other people mainly just because you know mm. there's like the ideas that i have you right. know and like the the kind of story directions that that i'm going to go in um but that's not necessarily like all I feel like capable of drawing, mm -hmm. you know, and like, I'm never going to do like a noir story because that's just not where my head goes. Mm -hmm. um, but I like that style and I like that look. And so like working with someone who has that idea and not put together is always like kind of cool and it pushes you in like a different direction um, as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to work with writers. Uh, there can be a little conflict, of course, but I'm sure. <laughs> uh, generally, generally, it's fun. Uh, uh, Jesse, I have a couple more questions for you, and then we'll wrap it up, and I'll get you out of here. I'm sure you're busy. <laughs> it's 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 nine o'clock. <laughs> uh, on, uh, on a weekday listen man i'm in bed at 10 30 i don't know about you <laughs> uh i actually go to bed pretty early and wake up pretty early uh, same here <laughs> but i can handle i can handle 9 30 so um, <laughs> awesome uh jesse what is your favorite sandwich my favorite sandwich um does a does a burger count as a sandwich sure or, it's got two pieces you... of bread and something in the middle why not <laughs> okay like yeah, probably like a good burger. Um, yeah. Man, patty melt. Patty melt would probably be actually the the. When I go to like a mm -hmm. a place that has a patty melt, that will be the sandwich that I get. Uh, patty um, melt. A good patty melt is few and far between. I haven't had one. Yeah, that, yeah. That they could, they could be pretty hit and miss. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, I do like a good patty melt. I oh, forget it. Yeah, you just you just kind of made me hungry to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so obviously, you know, like you, I'm sure you see yourself in comics for the foreseeable future. Where do you want to be yeah. in, let's say like three to five years, three to five years. Um, I guess like sort of my, my situation is like, I, I drew comics, but I wasn't necessarily in comics until very, mm -hmm. very recently, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, and so now it's, it's my full-time job, but it's like, it's a hustle and, and it's yeah. like doing this and doing that. And like, you know, the morning can be spent writing a lot of emails. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think in like three to five years, what I would like is it to be a little less of a hustle and more of just like, I'm going to sit down and do this and mainly be drawing um, for most of my day mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to like, balancing doing doing a bit of juggling which i feel is a lot of my day right now yeah i think um, it, you know if you're working from home it's a lot of everybody's day you know especially i think yeah, you know like yeah. like you said like you just you're you're working full-time in comics now and I've, i think you know like dude you're a talented guy i'm sure like in in the next couple <laughs> of years you're gonna you know like this stuff is gonna take off um Thank and you. i do hope you get that oh, eisner because that would be awesome yeah that would be really cool <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been like sort of a weird change for me because I, I was a teacher two years ago um, uh -huh. and, and now I'm just like not, and it's so like, it, it's weird on like a couple levels of like, mm -hmm. you know, teaching, you're talking to people all day, right. like in a lot of people and like now it's like, nope, mm -hmm. you don't talk to anybody. <laughs> like, and it's also like my, my hobby was like, you know, doing comics Mm -hmm. And now it's like, that's, that's like my job, but like my idea is like, Oh, how do I relax? It's like, Oh, I just go sit and do some drawing. It's like, yeah, but that's your job now. <laughs> and it's like, you need to really like take a break. So I don't know. I need to, need to find a new hobby, uh, model trains or something like that. <laughs> hey, <yeah. laughs> do, are you still, are you an avid collector or is it just like, you're kind of just like, you know, I'm just going to draw my own stuff and that's, that's it. <laughs> um, no, I, I love, I love comics, but mm -hmm. I've sort of like, I don't have that collector mindset mm -hmm. anymore. Um, and, and so like, I don't, I, you know, I like Marvel essentials, 
Okay. You no, know, like, you know, just like 500 pages of, of black and white 60s Marvel comics. Yeah, I'm yeah. totally happy. So like, I love comics. I'm always reading comics, but I don't have that like, that, you know, holy grail sort of hunting thing. Um, and I think it's something like I've sort of consciously chosen because I know uh-huh. it can get set off where if I like start, you know, getting Frank, T- Frank Miller, Daredevil run. Yeah. It's like, I'm, if I start, I'm going to have to go all the way to the end, but there is no end. Right. You know? Cause it's, it's like, yeah, you're going to stop when Frank Miller stopped. Probably not. Like you're going to want that next issue. Um, yeah, so um, I'm not a big collector and like, mm-hmm. I got, uh, I only have like three long boxes. Um, I'm but, very uh, impressed by that, by the way. <laughs> Cause that's, that's awesome. Um, like I got, I have a buddy who like, he'll buy comics weekly but then like he'll like give them away to people you know just because like he's like i'm done you know like i read it i'm i'm good to wow. go you know? yeah yeah i'm impressed with that yeah like i'm i'm like i'm the opposite i'm like i need to get my books weekly i need to do this collection i need to do that collection. it's like it's like a like albert einstein like working on like the theory of relativity except like a middle-aged guy in queens trying to collect comic books you know <laughs> yeah um, do you like go back are you like looking for you know digging through back issue bins looking for for certain yeah, things do yeah you have absolutely. a list when you go into a store like yes yeah 100 percent. i have a list i'm a big jack kirby guy my okay my obsession for the last couple of years the last few years i should say has been trying to get one through 101 fantastic four right okay I have 23 issues to go and okay. they're, they're all like in the top 30 basically, you know? Okay. Yeah. So the, those prices are getting up there then. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're getting up there. And I'm also like, but at the same time, I'm not one to be like, Ooh, I have, I need to spend $7,000 on this one issue. I will, I will buy the most beat up copy of a book just right. to like, put it in the collection you know and like the yeah, Kirby yeah. stuff too, like the sixties Kirby stuff. I'm like, whenever I go to a store, like if we're, if my wife and I are on vacation, I will find the comic store in the area and we'll go. Mm-hmm. And usually like, I honestly, like it's, it's crazy how every, anything outside of like Metro New York or a Metro city comic book stores have their silver age books, like marked down so low because I guess nobody wants them, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's, it's very geographically. That's a very interesting thing that I found. <laughs> so you're choosing like vacations in Nebraska and stuff like that. Um, just for the, <laughs> the comic book shops. Uh-huh. Well, well, we went, we went to, we went to Connecticut. Uh, we, we stayed in an Airbnb last year that was like COVID safe and all this stuff. Okay. And there was a comic store in town and I ended up buying a, not, not in terrible shape, a fantastic four number 10 for like 90 bucks, you know? Okay. Yeah. That's and, a- which is fantastic so like i think like geographically with collecting there's like a thing and i'm but i'm not smart enough to make that that chart that graph you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah all um, right yeah I, I don't really collect like that um mm. and you know for for me like the first hundred issues that's like the first that's like four essentials um yeah. so i would just <laughs> like buy those and be happy with those um uh, I don't. I don't need the color. Um, I mean, I love having old comics, but yeah. Plus, they look those. The essentials are good on the shelf too. Like when you have like a big row of them, there's just something like kind of cool about that, you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like I and I also I just like really get into them. Like the the John Romita Senior uh, Spider Man oh, run. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's like I just love having like that big volume and just being able to just read through it. They're, those were so dynamic too like i remember like when i used to work like in my in my early 20s at like the uh, comic shop um we would just sit there and read a bunch of those all the time you know like the masterpieces and the essentials mm. yeah. and like all the, those early spidey books i feel like they're so dynamic in a very mm-hmm. interesting way yeah. that a lot of it holds up a lot of it doesn't but a lot of it like really holds up just yeah. like the way stuff was kind of like laid out you know mm-hmm. I, I think like I think the people who are like, I think Stan Lee mm-hmm. cared about Spider-Man. Like, I don't think he cared about Iron Man. 
Because you read those yeah. like early Iron Man and they're just like, it's the same story again and again and yeah. again. <laughs> like, and it's just, it it doesn't have that like effort. And like, you know, it's got Don Heck doing the art. So it's like, mm. great. But like, then you read the Spider-Man. It's like, oh no, he's thinking about this. And like, it's, he's putting together good scenes and good sequences and stuff. Um, and I don't think it's just different artists. I think like- right that there is a, an attention being paid to Spider-Man that is not being paid um, to some of the other stuff. No, I agree with you hundred percent. Like I was always like on that same token, almost like a little bit iffy on like the, the Stanley X-Men stuff, you mm-hmm. know, where like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's good. Much like the Iron Man stuff, it's good, but it's like, it's a lot of samesy samesy, but the Spidey yeah. stuff, it really had like that continuous. Yeah. And, and flow, like it's changing. You know? You yeah, know, it's it's moving forward. Um, mm. Yeah, the, those those sixty Spider Man, uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, the sixties FF stuff too is great, but yeah. I think that yeah. it was more a lot of like, you know, who's to say like who really wrote what in those? Because like the Kirby influence is just like the strongest thing about those books. You yeah, know? yeah, definitely. I mean, and when you look at like Fourth World, uh, mm. it's like okay, yeah, the Fantastic Four is a lot of Kirby. Um, you know. All, all the glib, the glib dialogue is Stanley, I think. Yeah, but like yeah. The, the plots and ideas, I think, are Kirby's. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Same thing with um, with Kirby's Thor run. Also, mm-hmm. that was like a lot of his kind of input too. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, where could everybody find you? Um, you can find me in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. Um, what is you your social security number? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me uh, Instagram. Um, Jesse dot Lonergan um, on Twitter. I'm Jesse Lonergens, um, and basically, I don't know. If you just type in my name, uh, you know, my website is jessielonergan.com. So as long as you you spell my name right and uh, you see pictures of, of comic book stuff as opposed to an Australian rules football player, um, <laughs> that that's me. <laughs> Awesome, man. And where can people find your original art? Uh, my original art, um, I have a few small things on my Etsy shop, um, mm-hmm. which is Shop Lonergan. Um, but Inky Knuckles is my is my art rep. And so they have original pages. Um, I think everything of Hydra is gone. Um, but uh, Planet Paradise pages um, and some other stuff as well they have. Um, and they're a great place there. They rep a lot of different people and they have a lot of great work. So inkyknuckles.com is a good place just to check out for cool comic art. Awesome, Jesse. Listen, man, I appreciate you coming on. This was a lot of fun. I hope you had a decent enough time. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Jesse, thank you so much. That was a fun conversation. Uh, we talked a little bit afterwards to, you know, really, really great dude. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be popping up in tons of places in the comic world uh, sooner than you think um loki's been pretty cool huh uh i want to know what you guys think of it uh you know leave your stuff in the comments your comments in the comments i should say or hit me up at btc rich on twitter as usual um it looks like the abomination is going to be in the shang chi movie from a very grainy still that was put out the other day and they gave him the cool ears i'm pretty excited about that uh let's talk about my books of the week this week um dc's been killing it uh, Infinite Frontier came out this week. Infinite Frontier number one. Uh, really loved it. I'm a sucker for these cosmic DC stories that are done right. Uh, I guess they're still typically like the crisis stories. It's a six issue miniseries, uh, and uh, you know you're getting a lot of you're getting like the uh, the the Justice League of the universe. Uh, you're getting uh, Flash traveling through all sorts of different dimensions. The Return of the Psycho Pirate, which I always think is cool, and this is like a big lead up to like Dark Side showing up again, being like really cementing himself as like the biggest and the baddest in the DC universe. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy this week, pretty fantastic too. Um, I really enjoyed the way Al Ewing wrote uh, Nova and Magneto's interaction. Very delicious dialogue between both of them. And I really got into it. I was very vested into the book. And it was one of those books where I was like, you know, I kind of forgot it was a comic. I felt like I was watching like a, like a drama uh, on HBO or something, you know, like very, 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 very excellent issue that deals with not only the where the guardians are at right now they're teaming up with dr doom um you know peter quill was lost in space for a little bit you know the return of uh, richard Ryder nova uh fan favorite character he's got a cool new jacket 
Um, and this starting to tie in with the current X Men stuff. Uh, last week, X Men, uh, Planetized X Men came out, in which it it shows the X Men are basically inhabiting Mars now as one of their one of their territories in outer space. So you know, if you have the mutants on Mars, you have Sword watching over the galaxy, and then you have um the guardians of the galaxy guarding that very same galaxy. So you're kind of going to get some interesting cosmic stuff between the cosmic characters and the X-Men, which I feel like it's about time in the modern landscape of the Marvel books. Uh, Blue flame. Number two came out this week. Really, really solid superhero book out from vault. Um, Two friends of the show, Christopher Cantwell and Adam Gorham are involved with it writer and artist uh really excellent story i suggest to go pick it up scoop these issues up before they're gone um black hammer new black hammer black hammer rebirth i think came out this week or black hammer reboot i'm not 100 percent sure even though i do have the book in front of me i was wrong on both accounts it's black hammer reborn uh black hammer reborn jeff lemire caitlin yarsky dave stewart and nate pecos uh another excellent Excellent addition to the Black Hammer universe out from Dark Horse Comics. Uh, I highly suggest most of all of Jeff, you know, not most, all of Jeff Lemire's stuff to people. Uh, if you want some really solid superhero stuff, Black Hammer is such a great read, even if you're not a fan of like the big two superheroes. Um, it It's really tongue in cheek in a lot of ways. So this takes place uh, in the Black Hammer canon in the timeline in the future um i would say like in the modern day where um the black hammer who's the original black hammer's daughter uh is you know she's kind of facing i want to say like a midlife crisis almost uh it's a really really solid read the art is beautiful everything is gorgeous about this book i can't wait to see uh more of it and where it goes and my book of the week this week is checkmate number one uh Checkmate has been on hiatus for quite some time in the DC universe, uh, but with all the Levian of all the Leviathan stuff that came out over the last couple of years, why not do a spy slash detective centric book starring a ton of wacky characters? You got Manhunter, Steve Trevor, um, Lois Lane, and uh, Green Arrow to name a few, and Mister Bones. Uh, this is done by uh, Bendis, Maliev, and Stewart. Uh, fantastic number one. Uh, it's my book of the week just because like. This is one of those books where Bendis has been working with Malia for so long that when it's solid, it's it's more human than human. It's more solid than solid. Uh, really excellent creative team on this book. Visually stimulating. You get a chance to see these kind of quote unquote B-level characters working in a capacity that, you know, they're they're separately known for, but now together as a team book, kind of figuring out these mysteries, you know, Talia al Ghul is involved. Damien is involved. Batman's son. Uh, I'm really looking forward to where this is going. And it's a six issue miniseries. I enjoy it when you have these concepts, like these, these higher concepts of like checkmate or infinite frontier that are limited to the six issue format, you know, or eight issue if they go, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, because it's kind of like, all right, this is a mini series. In my head, I'm like, if this works out, they have other plans for these characters. Great. If it doesn't, you know, we're not saddled with a book that might get canceled, etc. And all that stuff. Uh, next week, we're uh, skipping a week on Behind the Counter 2.0 BTC 2.0. Uh, I will be back in two weeks with another interview, and uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Don't forget to subscribe uh, on the channel at BTC Rich X. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at BTC Rich. Also, big congrats to Sean, the winner of uh, my giveaway last week. I hope you enjoy the box, dude. All right, guys, take it easy.